Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming up, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of the Polynesian villas in this week's episode of the DBC Show. The DBC Show is brought to you by dbcstore.com. You'll save thousands of dollars on your next DBC contract when you let the experts at the DBC Store help welcome you home. Visit them at www.dbcstore.com or call 1-800-550-6493. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming to you from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table this week by my good friend, Sean Falk. Hello. Jackie Gailey. Hi, everyone. From the DBC store, Jamie Carr. Hey. And Mr. Jerry Saito. Hello, good day. Joining us via Skype, Mr. Pete Shidley. Hey, everybody. And back on the controls, our associate producer, Mr. Corey Fiescanaro. Welcome home. And uh, just a reminder to everybody, if you need to rent some points for a DBC stay, give our folks over at the DBC store a call. 1-800-550-6493 1-800-550-6493 or check out their website. Um, give them some time. Don't reach out for a reservation next week. Okay? And it's about matching up points and finding the right points and making sure that space is available as DBC, any DBC member will tell you. That's a challenge. Even when you're just using points regularly, it's a challenge. So uh, the more notice you can give, the better. What's a good, what's a good, I'd say at least five months out would be good. I mean, there's some spotty availability, four months, three months, two months, but five months is where you, you get some better options. So there you have it. At least, you know. At least five months out. All right. So we're going to talk about the pro, we, we've been doing this like once a month right now, um, the pros and cons of each of the DVC resorts. Um, we want to do the pros and cons of the Polynesian Oh, wait, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. I have been forgetting in these shows. Pete, you have something to talk about. Oh, the availability chart? Yes. Yeah, okay, I can update that, yeah. So anyone that goes on and looks at those availability charts that I prepped, uh, they were originally set up for studios and one bedrooms. Uh, We decided about a year ago to expand it to two bedrooms. Uh, and so finally a year later, because that's how long it takes to prep those charts, um, myself and uh, Bing Showway is the other uh, is, uh, dis board person who gets involved, and uh, they're updated. So if you go on to the availability charts on the uh, dis boards under, uh, I think it's under the DVC member, um, I member which services. Form it's under, but. Uh, uh, it's on there, and uh, the two bedroom charts are all on there now too. So uh, go on there, and uh, you can compare the the that to uh, the one bedrooms in the studios. Yeah, and that's a so. good tool if you're looking to, if you're thinking about renting points, kind of give you an idea. Especially if you're not yeah. a DBC member and you can't log in and see what the availability is, it kind of give you a good idea of what you're looking for and whether or not you know at each resort and what uh whether or not it's going to be available so we'll make sure we have and that's true they are even good for rentals because they'll tell you if i'm four months out what resorts are probably going to be available at what time of year so it's it's worth it even as a non-member to take a look at those sure absolutely so over on disboards.com under dbc member services but we'll make sure there's a link in the show notes Fiasco has this work cut out for him with these shows, making sure there are links everywhere for things. Oh, uh, just links. Not, not the big of a deal. All right. Um, so we're going to talk about the pros and cons of the Polynesian. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and start off. I only have one con for the Poly. No, there's only studios. Studios and the bungalows. There are no one or two bedrooms. Yeah. Uh, no, there's two bedrooms. It's got the bungalows. Sorry, the bungalow. The bungalow is a two bedroom, right. but there's no one bedroom option, uh, or a standard two bedroom that doesn't cost eight billion points <laughs> yeah, a night. Exactly. Um, right. So you know, technically, the bungalow is a two bedroom, but when you compare it to a regular two bedroom, it's at least double or triple the points. Insane. Um, so that is my biggest complaint. I mean, now, you know, that being said, these studios are very large. They're you know, Polynesian Studios. Remember, the Polynesian was built in 1970, uh, 1971 when it opened. Um, 
And in those days, 425, 450 square foot room was the norm, uh, which is why the poly rooms are so big. And uh, they just converted, what was it, two longhouses um, into DVC rooms, and they made those rooms studios. So they're, even still, they're still larger than you know most DVC studios. I think the only there's there's, uh, there's three uh, there's three buildings that were converted. Three buildings converted. Um, yep. Uh, Pago Pago, uh, Moria, and I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Tokelau. You probably are. Um, <laughs> They're but, also the only studio that has the additional bathroom. So you've got the shower, sink, uh, toilet, and one, and then you've got the shower, bathtub, toilet, and sink in the other. There isn't a toilet in that shower. Oh, sorry. No, just the a second yeah. one is, but it's there's a, sink a, and shower. a shower and a sink. So but, essentially, yeah, and that right, for, and for huge. a studio because they do have the, that that split two shower design in some of the one bedrooms. Um, or the you know but not studios right but so it's just studio so it's the only studio that's got the extra shower so if you've essentially got four or five people trying to get ready at one time it, it's it's a game changer or if you have two adults that each take a lot of time in the shower there you go there you go oh, that's i uh i have a pro mixed with a con and so i'll start with the pro the pro is that out of all the resorts i've stayed at the polynesian has the best room service but I think out of a lot of the other DB, uh, other DBC resorts, with the exception of like uh, maybe Saratoga Springs and maybe Old Key West, um, it suffers with the actual sit-down dining. I think you have much far better options at other resorts like Grand Floridian, uh, Contemporary, uh, Co- Copper Creek than you do at the Polynesian as far as their sit-down dining resorts go. Especially I'm going to disagree, disagree with you on that. Michipona I, I was gonna say, Cafe, Ohana. I, I was going to yeah. say mine, like, because, like, I... Polynesian is very, very low on my list of where I would want to buy. Maybe even the last one that I would want to buy. And that's just, like, personal taste. Um, but the only thing like one of the few things that i am like oh i would like at least is like the dining if because i would rather personally i'd rather own at grand floridian or price wise i'd rather own it and availability wise at bay lake tower um if i'm going to be on that monorail route so polly gets last for me but even if i stayed at the other two i would go over to polynesian and eat more That's than likely so yeah, time we i stay still out there is go over I, there I, to I, eat i'm, I'm yeah. gonna say that um a kona cafe has uh, really, really come back from the low it had been experiencing in terms of its food and quality a few years ago. Um, I've now eaten there in the last year four times, and the meals have been anywhere from good to outstanding. Mm-hmm. Service has been consistently excellent. Um, Ohana, while we have service problems with the rushing, I'm even starting to hear reports now, more and more so, anecdotally, that that is starting to ease up. I think maybe they finally get it or getting the message. I've never had a problem with the quality of the food and the flavor of the food at Ohana dinner. Breakfast is another story, but dinner has always been, I've always found it to be very good. Plus, you have what is arguably one of the best quick service locations anywhere at Walt Disney World in uh, Captain, Captain Hooks. Cook. Yeah. What Captain is it Cook. about the dining that you're not yeah. into? So, I mean, I, I I have had negative experiences, uh, specifically with Ohana. Um, I mean, once I hear everybody say, "Oh, it's awesome again," then then I'll go back, or maybe if we review, you know, if we review it, I'll obviously go back. But um, as far as like Kona Cafe goes, I'll, maybe I have to go back and, and go, go to Kona Cafe. But I look at the price point of Kona Cafe, and it's comparable to the price point of Jico. It's com- it's almost mm. comparable to the price point of Citricos. It's almost comparable to these other restaurants that like I think are way better. In my opinion, I, I mean, I do agree with that point or whatever. Like Kona Cafe to me is like a miss. Oh, the food's good, but the price is way too expensive. They didn't have any walls. Like it's literally like in the lobby. Yeah. Like you're eating in the lobby. Right. Like I just don't. I don't get it. I'm like this I, isn't it seems like a quick service restaurant. Doesn't feel it, it does. But it it's does. Like $40 but the food is steaks. the food is really good. Is I think good. the sleeper that nobody brought up too was when I was at Trader Trader Sam's. Sam's. Mm-hmm. We we had every intent to leave and go 
eat somewhere else and we ask about food and that food was so shockingly good. good i was amazed i had no interest in leaving so i think you're covered on every base i mean you're covered yeah. on so many bases there i got a flatbread there and it was so Wait, that's what good. i had it was oh, phenomenal yeah, that flatbread, that Hawaiian flatbread. it was oh, phenomenal. So good. we ordered a second one after oh, yeah. we ate the first awesome. one you can also get the dole whip there right oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i think on the outside i think yeah. you have to go outside i was yeah. going to mention the dole whip stand if you're a fan of dole whips you can walk up to the window and just order one yeah my only complaint with Polynesian is Ohana's. I love Ohana's. Like, I love it. But what I hate is you can't get in. Like, I, I you have to really book that far in advance. That's my only gripe with uh, Polly is, I, you know, I just can't get into that restaurant. Mine, I mean, the other part, and it goes to go with what Pete was saying, the other part of why Polynesian's so low on my list is a bungalow issue. Um, just because, like, when your only option is deluxe studios and bungalows, those bungalows are never full. Like anytime I'm there, there's never people in them. I might see one family. It's a ghost town. It it's really a ghost is. Town. And there's got to be a breaking point somewhere down the road where Disney's like, we have to lower the price on the bungalows and like points per night. And when they do, it's going to drive the price of the studios up. Right. That's the only option as well as when you're buying, like, let's say like if every resort was like a million points, and they're dedicating out 80% of their points to bungalows, then 100% of people are fighting over 20% of availability. And eventually it's just going to reach this threshold where I was like, I have no interest in Polynesian. I've got to be done with this. But Polynesian by far has like the most loyal fan base of people like the people are like can get like vicious about how much they love. I don't know that they have the most loyal because I think, you know, you talk to owners i've talked to owners at old key west i've talked to owners at saratoga springs that have the same fierce loyalty to their resorts almost every like a lot of the articles and stuff that get published and everything almost every single one of them that says like i became a dvc member it was either on a polynesian visit or they went over to the polynesian and saw it, it like it, the polynesian's always in it somehow even even if they didn't buy there somehow like this like the polynesian turns people on to stay wanting to do DVC. I'm not sure what it is about it that brings that I don't know if y'all have that experience. I think with Jerry and I are it. top on the list of people that would fight for the for the Polynesian. I so when Polly. you brought it up I was like there's no con. Like it has a very special place in my heart. I think the mm. only con for me and this is gonna sound like really gripey was um I'm not a morning person, so that boat that starts picking people up at the, at the transportation <laughs> at the very center. peak of dawn after I've been out enjoying Disney in the evening <laughs> um, and having a first floor room with the patio just radiating that noise and having it every 10 to 15 minutes, um, I eventually just said it's time to get up and enjoy the day. That is one of the most common complaints I hear. It's really my only Polynesian. complaint about staying there was that it was enough for me to say if I was going to stay that stay there again, I would actually, I don't generally request specific longhouses or specific villas or specific things, but just to even get out of that corner I was in because you really could, it was enough to get you up and out of bed and say, I'm not staying here any longer. Well, you have you have two op- view options at uh, Polly. You have Lakeview and Garden View. Lakeview is going to be over that lake, yeah. over Bay, uh, Seven Seas Lagoon, where the ferry is going out when the boats pull out they have to sound their horn Mm -hmm. um and yes it's loud Mm -hmm. but you know if you're on the third floor of that longhouse you also have an unobstructed view of the magic kingdom um which is what uh, fiasco had in the room that he stayed in for our dvc seven and seven resorts in seven days seven weeks series yeah um and that was a pretty stunning view and I got to say, that was that's the nicest studio. That's the nicest studio I've ever seen. Um, and I, I love the Polynesian. But for me, like like I said, the dining. I, I know you, most of you all disagree with me, but... Well, the good I, news I, is you can hop on the monorail and just ride, yeah, ride on over around. to somewhere else, but you love the other 90% of it, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, here's another thing, that, and this is nitpicky. And well, my almost, porn comment was nitpicky. So. Almost elitist. Well, this is going to be even more so. I love the Polynesian. I've always loved the Polynesian. Um, but it suffered in comparison after I saw Olani. Mm-hmm. Um, because Olani is such an authentic Hawaiian resort where the Poly really is more of a character of a Polynesian resort. I like um, that character. <laughs> no, so do I. So do I. But when you 
when you've done when you've done Olani, the poly suffers. I completely 100% agree with your statement, but I also envision like when you come in Olani and they have the floor to ceiling doors that slide open. I think could you imagine Orlando in August? Mm-hmm. Like no. Right. You, you can't replicate it only because it wouldn't you're not getting island breeze. You're not mm-hmm. getting the same thing. Uh, there are certain things like when you go up the staircase um, near Captain Cook's, like when you go up, that is the exact staircase that's in Alani. So I always get that kind of wave washes over me. Like I feel like I'm back. There's there's a couple of nods that really make you feel like if you close your eyes, oh, you it are in. It's yeah. the exact same I didn't staircase. Even, I didn't notice that. Yeah. yeah. So. But so there's a couple of nods that make you feel like you're there. But again, you wouldn't want floor to ceiling doors that open in August in Orlando. So I think you have to kind of trade off the island breeze with. Uh, you know, I think air the conditioning color. is there <laughs> is, exactly because I've I mean I've stayed at the Polynesian, not DVC side, but I've stayed regular. Um, is there anything to be said like for you guys? Is there like a check-in process because it doesn't have a dedicated lobby really? Like, is it longer or more complicated or anything in y'all's for experience checking into the Polynesian? Yeah, by well, comparison to other DVC resorts that have their own dedicated check-in. Well, my experience has been I've checked in beforehand and then yeah. got the text message, had mm-hmm. my magic band, and just walked up to now the room. Now that they've got the right. text message alert where the magic band mm-hmm. through my Disney experience opens your door. Yeah. Um, I would say that I think the only one where they have, I mean, obviously Old Key West and Saratoga are dedicated, so let's take that out. Let's, mm-hmm. my comments only around hotels. Grand Floridian did it right. You know, they have the Porca Share where you pull up for DVC, they have a dedicated check in, but that's really the only one where you're not sharing with the hotel side. Um, but I think because of, like Jerry said, with the magic being sound, they've eliminated no, everyone's not lining up to stand in line to check in. And, and I've checked in before without the magic band mm-hmm. and, and just, you just regular hotel check in. You just walk mm-hmm. up to the front. They give you your magic band. They check you in. You go to your room. Well, I've always Peace wondered care. about that because, like, when we did our review for Beach Club, and like, it, like when we wanted to go right downstairs within the DVC building, there was like a person at a t- you know at a booth like talking to us about like because we were trying to get into um, Cape May or whatever, and so like he helped us and like took us over there and everything. So I've always just wondered like Polynesian doesn't have that. I don't know if that's a big issue for. People, I think that's though. more of a concierge yeah. at Beach Club, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, most of them don't. It's just a regular have hotel check in. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's more of a, a Beach yeah. Club has a different concierge that'll. I've actually purchased tickets to stuff at that concierge. Mm-hmm. It looks like their front desk, but they're actually more of a concierge and none of the other ones really have that but i i wait in line most of the time like mm. jerry said he used magic band on you know for years and years and years all you did was wait in line they they're staffed for that they know everyone's coming around the same time and if it's super busy then drop your bags go do something else is yep. it is it also a big deal that like it doesn't seem to have its own dedicated dvc pool even though like storm along is amazing but like you know the other ones like even for like you know, Bay Lake has like their own and like oh, quiet all- pool. well, there is quiet a quiet pool. there is a quiet pool at the Poly. It's not a DVC pool. It's always been there, mm-hmm. but there is a quiet pool at the Poly. Okay, and they did they did completely redo that pool yeah. right yeah, around the time amazing. they opened the Poly bunk, the Poly uh, DVC. And I did want to um, we're coming up with a lot of cons, but I did want to add a, a, a pro to this. I really like where the long houses are located in the resort. Because uh, some of the resorts, I mean, you mentioned Beach Club, uh, I think Wilderness Lodge, the DVC, uh, or at least Boulder Ridge, the DVC portion is kind of off to the side or in the back or whatever. The poly, uh, the poly longhouses are really right in the middle of the resort. They're very close to the to the quiet pool. They're very close to the main pool and the main uh, what do you call it the the main house there. Uh, they're also a close walk to the TTC, and that makes it very convenient if you want to go to Epcot rather than having to go over to the monorail and ride around to the TTC like you do for the Grand Floridian or for Bay Lake Tower. You can walk about five minutes to the TTC, and you're right there on the Epcot line. You can go right to Epcot. So it actually is very convenient yeah. for both uh, Magic Kingdom and Epcot, I think more so than the other monorail resorts. Yeah. Yep. I think it also has a really good, um, you know, like even though the Luau is definitely not Alani's Luau, but it does have something like that. That's an option that's right there at your resort. That's like a very, you know, if you're having like, this is like a birthday thing or whatever, like it's really easy to have a dedicated 
special event restaurant that you know is right there at, at your property. Yeah. And when we talked about OQS, I think we all said that you felt like you're once you go through the gate, you're there. You you don't really realizing. I think Polynesian does an amazing job of making you feel like. You're sur- You're there. You're I mean, in the South yeah. Pacific don't somehow. You're there. Don't get me wrong. I love the poly. I agree. I think the theming is great. Um, <clears throat> the only reason I wouldn't buy there is the lack of one bedroom units. If they had yeah. one bedroom units, I'd be all in. But I have that beef with those bungalows too, because when you go from having the tree houses at Saratoga Springs that can sleep up to nine for the price per night of basically a two bedroom villa anywhere and then you you know you sleep up to nine people and then you go to those poly bungalows and what they sleep the, they sleep nine the, I believe. the they, points are sleep, outrageous for they those sleep nine, I, I was do looking they? once do sleep nine? Oh, oh hold on one at a time one at a time i'm sorry i was i'm sorry i didn't mean to interrupt but the uh if you look at it you can rent seven studios for the price of one night in the bungalows <laughs> so, it's, it's kind of crazy. A, it's a big difference. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Um, so, you know, that's, uh, that can, you know, and I got to be honest, you know, when the bungalows first opened and they were the only game in town, they were amazing. But I'm going to tell you what, the Copper Creek cabins blow those bungalows out of the water no pun oh, intended nice. mm-hmm. the only thing those bungalows have going for them is the view of the magic kingdom and the fireworks that's it and i i'll tell you what i will gladly give up that view in exchange for how much nicer the cabins at copper creek are so you know and again you know as sean mentioned it's those they're practically empty all the time oh yeah they're practically empty so you know i think at some point they're gonna have to lower i think you're right they're gonna have to lower the points in those bungalows raise which, the and and street. raise the points on the studios yeah. but there you have it that's our pros and cons of disney's polynesian villas and that will do it for this episode of our show we hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you again next week have a good week